This is Greg Trotwine with Marine Technology TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Xavier Orr, the CEO of Advanced Navigation, to discuss his company's exciting new digital fiber optic gyroscope technology. Xavier, to start, can you give a brief on the company, a by the numbers look at Advanced Navigation using the metrics of your choice? Advanced Navigation, um, we have 40,000 products in the field uh, currently operating, uh, used by four of the top five car manufacturers, uh, nine of the top 10 surveying companies. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're in most of, pretty much all of the oil and gas companies. Uh, we have a lot of tech in the marine and subsea industries. Xavier, many thanks for that. We understand that Advanced Navigation will soon unveil the Boreas D90. Uh, to start us off, can you give us an overview of that product? Sure. The uh, Boreas D90 is a new generation of fiber optic gyroscope. Um, so fiber optic gyroscopes uh, use a coil of optical fiber uh, and measure an effect known as the Sagnac effect um, to determine rotation very, very accurately with no moving parts. Um, so they're, they're basically the most accurate and reliable uh, method for measuring angular velocity currently available. Uh, and Boreas takes that, that technology into a new generation. Um, with, with technology that you could equate, uh, like FM radio would be the current generation of FOGS uh, and Wi-Fi or digital radio would be, would be our, our new technology. Xavier, I'm sure that there are many, but specifically, can you point out the key features, the key capabilities of the Boreas D90 that make it stand out? So it's roughly 40% smaller, lighter, and uh, lower powered than competitive systems currently on the market. Um, all of that uh, while delivering higher performance and reliability. Um, so the technology that allows this is known as, um, is what we call defog, digital fog. Uh, so it's patent pending technology that's been in development for the last 25 years um, across two universities. Um, and that, those techniques, uh, there's, there's three elements to defog, um, basically uh, digital mod modulation techniques. Um, so that's rather than sending a sine wave um, of a single frequency through the coil, you're sending sped, spread spectrum signals. So you're sending a whole heap of frequencies through. Um, and then uh, we have specially designed coils to, to, make, uh, to make the most of those digital modulation techniques. Um, and those two things combined allow us to detect uh, in-run errors in, in the fiber optic gyroscope and correct for them um, that, that normally would just be errors in your data um, in other systems. Uh, and then the third element to defog is an optical chip uh, that combines what would typically be nine different discrete components into a single uh, chip. And, and that allows us to do a lot of optimizations and get a lot of performance gains. Um, we also can, can reduce the size, weight and power through that chip. So when you look at this product specifically, can you discuss the investment in time and money that were expended to bring the, mark, the product to market? And also, what do you consider to be the key enabling technologies or capabilities with, that have allowed advanced navigation to come with, up with this breakthrough? Sure. So uh, Advanced Navigation has invested around 100,000 staff hours um, into the development of, of Defog. Uh, then on top of that, there, there's, you know, probably half a million um, hours that was, have been spent at universities, uh, the two universities over the last 25 years uh, working on this technology. Um, so the key enabling technologies that, um, that allowed us to deliver this breakthrough um, they were actually working on gravitational research, uh, these two universities. Um, and and that's, that's what allowed them to, to, to um, come up with the breakthrough um, that would eventually turn into defog technology. Um, and so advanced navigation saw the potential um, of this technology and then, and then developed it through to the, um, the commercialization point. I'm sure there are many potential uses for this technology, but looking strictly at the marine, the subsea, the offshore energy sectors, where do you see the applications? Yeah, so there's many applications in the marine and subsea sectors. Uh, some of the big, biggest categories would be ROVs, um, AUVs, marine surveying and ship navigation. Uh, so Boreas allows for solid state um, north seeking or gyro compassing 
uh, at a fraction of the size, weight, power and cost of systems currently on the market. Um, that makes it viable um, to take systems that are currently using magnetic heading um, and move them across to, to much more reliable gyro compassing um, or, or north seeking technology. Um, so things like, you know, small ROVs and um, AUVs uh, that, that can't currently um, tolerate the power consumption or the size or the weight um, of, of the existing fog systems for gyro compassing um, can now utilize that technology. So let's step back from the Boreas uh, D90 for a moment and look a little bit more macro at some of the drivers that you see in the maritime and the subsea marketplace. Specifically, what are your customers looking for or what are your customers looking to achieve and how is advanced navigation investing to help meet those needs? Sure. So uh, there, what we're seeing is there's a big focus uh, on autonomy in the marine and subsea marketplace at the moment. Uh, so lots of companies investing a lot of money in, um, in automating uh, both subsea uh, systems and, and also like uh, sea systems. So um, Vororius provides uh, for them in space uh, applications that currently use like unreliable magnetic heading or, or heavily reliance on GPS uh, can now use gyro compassing and uh, highly accurate INS is within their reach. Um, and so some of the biggest sectors we're seeing for this is um, there's, there's lots of startup companies at the moment um, looking at the, the autonomous shipping sectors. Um, and then there, we're also seeing lots and lots of AUV applications coming up and, um, you know, autonomous subsystems. When you look at the market by market niche, uh, by geographic region or both, where do you see opportunity and what is your outlook for the coming 12 to 24 months? So the biggest opportunities we would see are in the um, US and Europe at the moment. Um, so we're just seeing, you know, a huge amount of interest in, in autonomous systems, um, a huge demand for INS systems for subsea and maritime applications. Um, and there, there's a really big drive at the moment for autonomous underwater vehicles, um, as well as a big drive for autonomous shipping solutions. Um, so we're talking with lots of interest in new startups in these um, sectors. Uh, in these spaces at the moment. Um, so yeah, a lot of activity in US and Europe, I would say.